In that video, you are going to discover the Nokia 3, the new Nokia for the masses by HMD Global. Yes, you have well listened. The new Nokia for the masses is not the Nokia 3310 but the Nokia 3. Risen from the ashes, the legendary Finnish brand makes a fresh start, connecting people the Android way. It's a nice sentiment for sure, but one that's mostly fueled by collective nostalgia over the Nokia Golden Age, back in the 90s. A good few years later, it's a new world out there, more competitive than ever before. Even with its affordable price tag, stylish exterior and credible pedigree, HMD's entry-level Nokia 3 is stepping into an oversaturated and very competitive budget niche. Is it ready to get bruised? Value is the name of the game nowadays and it's really tough to keep up with the likes of Moto, Zim and Mizu selling at heavily discounted prices. Maybe it's not surprising to see that in pure hardware terms, the Nokia 3 isn't even trying to punch above its weight class. On the specifications side, we have a metal frame, polycarbonate non-removable back, a Corning Gorilla Glass on the front. The Nokia 3 has a 5-inch IPS LCD with a 720 pixels resolution. The Nokia 3 features a MediaTek MT6737 quad-core 1.3 GHz Cortex A53 CPU alongside a Mali T720 MP1 GPU. The device has a 8 megapixel camera with autofocus on the back. The selfie cam is a 8 megapixel camera too. To continue with the specifications, the Nokia 3 will run on Android 7.0 Nougat. It has 16 GB of built-in memory expandable with micro SD slot. The device has 2 GB of RAM. The device is dual SIM. It has a 2650 mAh non-removable battery. Still, against all apparent reason, the Nokia 3310, version 2017 seems to be selling surprisingly well, successfully monetizing a legendary name and flying off the shelves much quicker than its cheaper alternative, the Nokia 216. The Nokia 3 was born with the same proverbial silver spoon and given the right circumstances, could use it towards an even more impressive sales advantage. There we are, an Android-powered, Finnish-owned and Chinese-made Nokia. We wonder how many people will give the idea a thought. Getting a Nokia after it was cool. Or even maybe, why not? Getting a Nokia before it's cool again? Let's be frank here, we all know that there is only one true material worthy of the original old school Nokia experience and it's definitely not brushed aluminum. Joking aside, the Nokia 3 is mostly using polycarbonate and does it well. We've said this before and we'll say it again, plastic has plenty of benefits better shock absorption and overall durability for one. The Nokia 3's backside is covered up by a pretty light and soft layer, which has a great silky smooth feel to it and looks prepared to take a lot of abuse. The absence of unsightly humps is definitely a plus, but HMD could have gone the extra mile and made the rear removable as well. There is even a slight gap between the screen and the back plate that gives off the distinct impression that you can pop the Nokia 3 open, pretty old school. Perhaps even slap on another colorful piece of plastic, which used to be a Nokia staple. Still, this is more of a comment on a missed opportunity than criticizing an overall pretty sturdy and well-built phone. And the plastic back is not the only thing that gives the Nokia 3 an eerie kind of similarity to older Lumia generation devices. The overall design language is definitely shared and it's no coincidence either. Sticking to a familiar appearance is a pretty sound strategy in the process of re-establishing the legendary Nokia brand. If nothing else, staying true to tradition might be the credibility boost that an emerging company like HMD could very well use. Plus, HMD sprinkled some 2017 styling on the Nokia 3 as well. Despite its budget nature, the Nokia 3 is set inside a metal frame. Again, there are a few details here and there we don't particularly enjoy, like the antenna bands of questionable necessity, given the all-plastic back. Still, we really dig the matte black finish. As far as controls go, the button layout is pretty standard. 
a volume rocker and power button sit alone on the right bezel, positioned pretty high up. We found it to work pretty well for the most part on a 5-inch phone but having large hands would definitely help. On the flip side, the relatively compact 143.4x71.4x8.5mm Nokia 3 comes with two card compartments. The upper one is for SIM cards, one or two nano SIM chips, depending on the version. The one below that is a dedicated micro SD card tray, for up to 256 gigabytes of additional storage. And just in case you were wondering, yes, the emphasis on the compact size of the Nokia 3 is definitely thinly veiled criticism against all the manufacturers out there opting for hybrid solutions on significantly bigger devices. As for the bottom and top bezels, you get a 3.5mm audio jack above the earpiece. Next to it is a secondary noise cancelling mic, a rather uncommon feature in the budget segment. A micro USB connector sits in the middle of the bottom bezel, flanked by a single speaker. We have to admit, we kind of like the simple grill design. It's really nice to see the Nokia 3 fully prepared to meet a modern connected lifestyle. Sadly, HMD made plenty of cutbacks in other areas. For one, there is the battery. The Nokia 3 packs a total of 2630 mAh, which is definitely on the low end. Just to put things into perspective, competing offers, like the Xiaomi Redmi 4 pack 4100 mAh in a body that is almost identical in size. If you have been keeping up with our recent review coverage in the budget smartphone segment, then you might remember we complained a lot about the battery downgrade in the Xiaomi Redmi 4A. Still, that phone has 3120 mAh. The Nokia 3 finds itself in pretty much the same boat, which should come as no surprise, given the many similarities between the pair. In fact, it did even worse, scoring only 53 hours of endurance in outstandardized test. Looking at the numbers, the phone actually appears to handle itself pretty well during calls and web browsing. Even video playback is decent and that endurance number is achieved using the Google Photos app. We are pretty sure a well-optimized dedicated video player app can do even better. Standby is the main issue with the Nokia 3. After multiple runs, it only managed to last 150 hours or so idling in standby, connected to the network with the screen off and Wi-Fi on. As previously mentioned, the Nokia 3 has a 5-inch, 720p display, kind of the norm for budget offers these days. The panel is also surprisingly good, again considering the Nokia 3's sub $200 price. The plasticky finish on top is what drags the experience down a bit and adds some unpleasantly high level of reflectivity. The Nokia 3 is plenty bright, topping out at around 477 nits. That is pretty comparable to the likes of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 and the Sony's Peria L1. Adaptive brightness is also enabled, but it is a little bit sluggish in reacting to changes. There is no Max Auto though, or Outdoor Boost feature, to temporarily go beyond 477 nits. A tiny amount of light bleed is noticeable in black at 100%, but nothing really unusual for an LCD. Contrast is also pretty good comparable to what you get from a Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 and noticeably better than on the Sony's Perian L1. Color accuracy is not a strong point of the Nokia 3. Just like the Nokia 6, we reviewed a while back, the Nokia 3 runs near stock Android. Our review unit boots 7.0, but a 7.1.1 ROM is apparently out there as well. Unlike the Nokia 6 unit, we imported from China, however, this one is an international version. That, of course, means it has Google Play services installed, along with a few Google apps. This has eliminated the need for HMD to include its own versions of many basic applications, essentially making the international version even more vanilla-like. However, we can't exactly drift into any form of Google Pixel comparison here, especially in terms of styling. HMD went all out with its blue Nokia look. It is definitely distinct enough to be easily recognizable and thus good for brand awareness. However, the two-color approach is not universally appealing.
It grew on us pretty quickly, but a little bit of variety and color here and there might be a good idea for future iterations. If there is one thing nobody really misses from the days of feature phones, it's the lack of customization. Sadly, the Nokia 3 is stuck with only one icon pack and overall GUI style with its default launcher. The lock screen displays the standard Nougat notification cards, complete with grouping, expanded view and direct reply. There is a clock as well, but it lacks the weather widget and further customization that the Nokia 6 had. This is just one of the examples of stripped down functionality in the Nokia 3 ROM. There's a camera shortcut in the bottom right, while the bottom left is home to a padlock icon. These cannot be changed either. While we're at it, the camera can be launched with a double press of the power button, if you enable the setting. The home screen is where the Nokia looks like no other. All of the system icons and pre-installed apps are painted in Nokia blue, and they're all circles. It's really too consistent, we found ourselves scrambling to find the icon we're looking for, because we couldn't tell them apart by shape or color. Of course, once you get used to what's where, it gets easier. There are no themes, the blue color scheme is the one you get and that's it. On the other hand, all the third-party apps retain their original icons, the launcher doesn't apply any changes to them. That makes them recognizable, but then they look nothing like the built-in ones. We kind of naturally wanted to pile them away on their own separate screen, just to keep things consistent and our OCD in check. Another major difference we spotted in the Nokia 3 ROM, compared to its bigger sibling, is the lack of choice, regarding an app launcher. This might actually be an international versus Chinese version thing, since the home screen only approach is very popular in Asian markets. Regardless, the Nokia 3 has an app drawer and it won't let you convince it otherwise. Of course, since there is folder support on the home screen as well, you can organize everything there and simply forget the pixel-like swipe up gesture to open the drawer even exists. The Nokia 6 had a slightly odd notification shade. The Nokia 3 seems to be pretty stock in this respect. A single pull down gets you four toggles, pull a second time and eight more appear, plus a brightness slider. And yes, there's auto brightness, accessible through the settings menu. Just to round up basic software functionality, most everything comes from Google's default app package. That includes the phone, messages and contacts apps. Chrome for a browser, calendar. Clock, Keep, Gmail, all great apps that most of us use anyway. However, that also means, you are only left with Google Photos as a photo and video viewer and Drive as a file manager. These are arguably great for accessing their respective cloud services, but a bit of a chore to use as general purpose tools. You do have to pick and install a file manager at the very least to make the Nokia 3 usable. Then again. We can't really say anything bad about Google Play Music. The app has only been improving in recent years. It works great for both offline and online use. And the latter doesn't even require a subscription to Google's paid music service. You can simply upload your own MP3s to the cloud and stream them free of charge, using the platform's powerful adaptive quality streaming technology. Last, but not least, the Nokia 3 has you covered even when you don't have a Wi-Fi or data connection. The built-in FM radio works great for some old-school, off-the-grid music. It even has RDS. No recording functionality, though. We didn't really go into the performance section expecting to be blown away in any way by the Nokia 3. Frankly, it wouldn't be fair or realistic to ask anything other than basic functionality out of a MediaTek MT6737, with only four 1.4 GHz Cortex A53 cores at its disposal and a single Mali T720 MP1 GPU core. That being said, we expected to see a level of performance similar to that on the Xiaomi Redmi 4A or the Sony's Perian L1. Both also have four Cortex of 53 cores, running at around 1.4 GHz, 2 GB of RAM and 720 pixels displays. There are some notable differences in GPS, but nothing that should have any effect on the overall usability of a phone, 
outside gaming and other graphics intensive tasks. Unfortunately, where Sony and Xiaomi came through with software optimization for a reasonably smooth experience across the UI and light everyday tasks, the Nokia 3 really struggles to cope. Hopefully, it's an optimization issue that can be resolved in future software updates. After all, HMD did make a huge point out of its dedication to timely updates and a high level of security on the new wave of Nokia devices. However, in its current state, the Nokia 3 unit we got for review, running its latest available Android 7.0 ROM really struggles even with mundane tasks. The UI is far from smooth, with animations often slowing down. We even got occasional freezes, with the CPU obviously trying hard to keep up with loading and scrolling heavier web pages and even searching and browsing the Play Store. Want to leave some app updates in the background while you go about other tasks? Not, really a viable option, to be frank. To kick things off, we have Geekbench 4, a pure CPU benchmark. Things are looking rather bleak for the Nokia 3. In terms of competition, we pit it up against a few other recent quad-core, Cortex of 53 devices, we had in the database, like the Sony's Piri L1, Xiaomi Redmi 4A and Mizu M5C. Most other devices we threw into the mix are there based on their price similarity to the Nokia 3. Mizu M5 and M5S, Xiaomi Redmi Note 4, most of these have four more cores to work with, which makes for pretty big variances in performance. The Nokia 3 did well with an active external amplifier, delivering above average loudness and nicely clean output. Plugging in a pair of headphones did a lot of damage though affecting the degrading the readings across the board. Volume plummeted too so it's really not a performance worth writing home about. A solid camera reputation has accompanied the Nokia brand for the better part of its existence. During its time behind the wheel, Microsoft mostly remained true to the tradition, putting out some impressive mobile shooters. However, it is important to note that the camera focus has mostly been limited to high-end flagship models throughout the years with only little bits and pieces of innovation trickling down the rest of the, the lineup. Keeping that in mind, the Nokia 3 delivers a camera setup, pretty adequate and suited for its price point. There is also a little twist, it has a pair of 8 megapixel camera. Before you get too excited, no, it's not a dual camera setup, but rather an attempt at an impressive selfie experience. At least on paper, that is. First. Let's take a look at the camera app. It is the same custom deal we saw on the Nokia 6, simple in some ways, but also potentially confusing and overcrowded if misused. In the main view, you get a shutter release on the bottom, a switch to video mode next to it, so the viewfinder changes to 16.9, and a shortcut to the gallery on the other side. A tiny mode selector next to the shutter release gives you the option to choose regular photo, panorama, or beautify mode. On the opposite end of the viewfinder there are switches for flash mode, on, off, auto, HDR, on, off, self timer, off, 3 seconds, 10 seconds, and front, rear camera toggle. No HDR auto here, like the Nokia 6 had. There's a hamburger button too, for access to settings. However, the biggest beef we have with the Nokia 3 is its inconsistency. Autofocus often misses and is stubborn about refocusing. Exposure controls are very sensitive, especially when using spot metering. Most shots came out either very under or overexposed when we tried to apply any correction with a tap on the viewfinder. You are definitely better off just pointing and shooting, hoping for the best. We gave the Nokia 3 every chance to impress us, sadly, without much success. To HMD's credit, the entry-level device is surprisingly well-equipped to handle a connected lifestyle in 2017. There are plenty of little details, here and there, that offer some added value, but the Nokia 3 simply fails to deliver a solid overall smartphone experience. Just to reiterate a few important points yet again, we are well aware that the Nokia 3 is targeting a pretty low price point of about $150. 
Some of that has to go towards financing HMD's current formidable PR efforts to rejuvenate the legendary Nokia brand, not an easy, nor cheap task. We understand perfectly and our expectations were set accordingly. Still, on a perfectly unbiased and level playing field, the Nokia 3 objectively lacks behind almost all of its entry-level competitors, even those stuck with nearly identical low-level hardware. A mediocre camera, poorly optimized software and likely related short battery life just ruined the experience and helped us snap out of the retro hype pretty quickly. However, to be perfectly frank, that likely won't be the case for most prospective Nokia buyers out there. Just look at the ongoing Nokia 3310, version 2017, craze. People are still lining up to purchase what is essentially a PR stunt, built on top of a questionably good and obviously overpriced feature phone, to begin with. The Nokia 3 has every prospect to sell equally well. But even if it flops, the little budget Nokia shouldn't really be more than a tiny snag on the tracks of the massive hype train HMD is currently piloting. All eyes are now fixed on the company's eagerly anticipated flagship offer. It could really make or break the reinvented Nokia brand, so be sure to keep close taps on those developments. What do you think of the Nokia 3 the new Nokia from the masses? Share your thoughts and comments. To discover more Android and Nokia-related content, don't hesitate to subscribe to the S. Sorrels channel.